book and I said there's two kinds of dumb. A guy that gets naked and runs out in the snow and barks at the moon and a guy who does the same thing in my living room. The first one don't matter, the second one you kind of forced to deal with. The JT and Johnny Show, exclusively on WQKR Portland, and now dancing on the main stage, it's JT. How's a good looking kid? Way with the women? <laughs> Dresses like a dandy and he's a left hander. And people say he's fond of whistling sad ballads. And Johnny. Here's Johnny! Well, good morning, Portland and all of the other parts of the world. This is the JT and Johnny Show. It's Saturday morning, appointment radio. How's it going, my friend? It's going great, JT. I am rested. I am ready. I am rambunctious. It is time for the show. I am looking forward to this one. By the way, I'm I'm snapping to our intro music there because that's the big thing in country music right now. I don't know if you knew this or not, but right. you got to put the snaps in. Well, so, so so that begs the question, are there people in a studio, a group of folks, if you will, that oh, yeah. are standing there? Yes, oh yeah. They're, snapping. You know what they you know what they call More them? More of it a snap track. You know what they call them? What do they call them? Snappers. Snappers. Yeah, it's a big thing right now. If you like open up just a, a Nashville scene, they're like they're, they're hiring like crazy needed snappers for studio work. You know what, Johnny? So I've been yes. I think you're hopped up on Mountain Dew. Man, I did. You know, I wasn't going to say it, but I stopped off to the uh, local um, establishment. I got to be careful. You're going to attack me like a spider monkey. I, I don't even know what a spider monkey is, but I will attack you like said spider monkey. That's that's movie genius is what that is. It is? from Yeah, man. The from, Ballad of Ricky Bobby. The Ballad Talladega of Ricky Nights. Oh, yeah. That's a good one right there. So you, yeah. you can't quiz me off the bat like that, sir. You got to give me a chance to warm up my brain. I'll quiz you in just a few minutes. Okay, okay. We got a good one today, buddy. It's going to be a good show, man. Uh, and we, we're on a roll. We've got like, you know, 13, 25, 82 show, whatever it's been in a row of awesome shows. By the way, I got an, e I got an email this morning from something I ordered online. Okay. And I didn't remember ordering it. I hope that's not a good thing. Well, I did remember <laughs> ordering. I didn't remember what I ordered. And guess what the name of the company was? Tell me. Epic Sports. Epic. Yeah, and I was rattling my cage, and I was said, "Was it I'm... legit? Was it legit?" Order? Well, it turns out it is legit, and I was gonna. Th I was. I made it a point that I was going to remember what I ordered online by the time I got here, and I did. I ordered a. I ordered a TCU banner flag to put in my man cave. In your, you mean your basement? My yes, my basement. It's, right. Man cave sounds cooler, doesn't it? <clears throat> oh, it sounds epic. It. <clears throat> We're going to start off that way, are we? Man, it's it's a great Saturday, man. The sun is shining. The birds are singing. No, see, I was there at the ballpark go. last night. It's, Me too, yeah. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't quite as frigid as the night before, but it, hey, it, was, it was a little chilly. I did know. see on the old little Facebooker there that, uh, yeah. that Minnie Taylor there, first of all, he's getting tall, dude, and it uh, looks like he, he dominated on that, on that mound last night. Oh, he did. His team did not necessarily dominate, but mm -hmm. a lot of that going around. He did. He threw his his portion of the game. He threw a, a one hitter and struck out six batters and forty pitches. And wow, well, and, uh, had a great day. We, it didn't go our way either last night. We, uh, as you know, my my twelve year old plays on the White House Middle School baseball team, and we played. Guess what? We played Ooh, the your Port Portland Panthers. We played the Portland Middle team. And by the way, I think we need to get an environmentalist or a, a scientist out here. Well, I want some of that water, man. Yes. Because there is something, I'm going to go fill up my jug. There is something in the water in Portland, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely, they must. These are middle schoolers. They must have had at least, and I'm not, and I'm not an exaggerate. You know, I don't exaggerate, right? Never exaggerate. Right. They must have had truth, truth, truth. At least six kids that were over six feet. Seriously? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now these are seventh and eighth graders. Mostly right? eighth graders. Mostly I'm eighth graders. I'm coming to find out. Um, okay. You know, my son. He's I'm, I'm a big guy. And he's not no, terribly he's small. A, he's very athletic. But yeah. he but he looks kind of small out there compared to to some of these eighth graders. I'm right. I'm told if I recall this this seventh and eighth grade stretch is when they they hit these said growth spurts, 
And uh, some of the competition we're running to, they've done hit that gross bird, buddy. Wow. Um, but it was, you know, we it didn't go our way. Uh, great people, though, must must say that. Great fans, um, great kids. Um, but on the way out, I had to say, hey, good, good job, Portland, because I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want right. to come across the wrong way because even though last night we were rivals, today we're friends. We're friends because That's we right. are here in Portland, Tennessee. Shout out to Portland. By the way. If you want to call in and talk about what's in your water and why your kids are so call- tall, just give us a call. <laughs> See, I'm rhyming already. 615-325-0803 is our number. And you can always call in. And I always like it when they call in because, believe it or not, there is work involved when you call in. There's at least seven or eight different things that have to happen. And right. I typically enjoy watching JT sweat a little bit on the technology side. Yes. You know, as soon as we... Uh get a raise at some point you know they're gonna mm-hmm. they'll put the they'll put the glass partition up and and we'll put you know said producer behind the glass and so he can run all the buttons and all that kind of stuff like the big dogs do in nashville yeah but you know but you know we got it cozy and homey and you know we're right here in our little world and love it man right it's now fun. we're autonomous we it's just you and i and we're in control you're controlling all the buttons and um i kind of like it do you well, Good. absolutely. It's our chance to kind of just come in here on a Saturday morning, um, you know, in our little studio here, which is really cool, by the way. It is a nice um, I just, studio. I just sent out a picture. I'll tweet it out here in a second. I put it on the Facebook. Or, but, and we um, love drop-ins. I mean, you know. Sure. I mean, the station manager, those they love during the week. Just come on in, sit down. and Stop by. Stop by. It's say good hello. old country radio. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, back to our show today. We got David Isaacs. Dave Isaacs is his name. I'm Dave gonna... Isaacs. He's one of those... Uh, unique craftsman if you will yeah in the music world he's one of those guys that makes me just put the guitar on the corner and shake my head and just go uh like i remember old uh remember heinrich came in old yeah. john heinrich he humbled me so much and i just said man i just you're gonna put that saxophone in the corner and right play wait <laughs> <laughs> no seriously uh, dave isaacs is um he's a songwriter and he's got a lot of experience in the business but he's also a guitar teacher and the guy's just a guru on that guitar absolutely and um so we're really looking forward to hearing him strum and pick and do all those things guitar um but he also is, i saw he's got one of those gofundme campaigns that just ended okay. this week and um, apparently now he can put author next to his list of accomplishments his book uh, the perpetual beginner which sounds like it was written for me by the way um, mm-hmm. i guess that's going to hit the shelves or i don't know what the expression is by the way when you have books these days do they hit the shelves or do they they just uh, i don't know they go right to amazon right to amazon <laughs> wherever that is um right not in new york city apparently <laughs> i work with a lady whose niece is the vice president of amazon so I'm getting all sorts of inside track on like what's the vice president, like the vice president. Like she, I think she owns her own Island. Truth be told. I think she owns her own Island. <laughs> wow. So maybe, uh, if our radio show keeps on growing, like it's going to grow JT, maybe you and I, we can like, maybe get our own Island. Get our what own do Island. Yeah. I don't know. Right, right now I'm kind of feeling like an Island. No, but, man, we can get our own Island, you know, have some, uh, nice uh, shade trees and drink. You know, have some coconuts and just chill out and relax. And we could create our own island travel baseball team and have people come to our tournament. I don't know. This is they could be the Islanders. By the way, this is not on our sheet. What we were not supposed at all to talk about. Not at all. I don't and see it right here. Talking now speaking points, of island. No, speaking sorry. of not necessarily travel baseball, but sports. Yes, man. There's some stuff in the news. There is. There's, there's some a, stuff happening. There's a thing happening uh, this week. It's it's actually kind of madness going on, really. It is. You know, it, it, this is March. It is March. And it is the time of madness. March madness, baby. March madness. It's fun, man. This is a fun time for not just sports, but specifically the NCAA college basketball year. It, it is. And I'm one of these guys that, you know, I, I am a, I'm a football guy. We know that's true. Well, I ain't a baseball guy. Uh, and. I'm talking about as far as watching on okay, television, okay, okay. you know, that sort of thing. I mean, I follow my schools, you know, that I like to follow. And, and I, I'm not into, you know, the NBA basketball and any of that kind of stuff. But the NBA kind of lost me lately. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the college game gets fun when March Madness rolls around. Because what you have is you have these uh, mid-majors – and, you know, like OVC, like our own Belmont and Nashville, for example, makes the tournament for the first time. Um, OVC. Ohio Valley Conference. Oh, 
thank you. Thank yeah, you. the OVC Conference. That's okay. the conference that uh, Belmont and some of these other schools are. They're mid-major conferences. Sure, they're, yeah. They're not, on the, they're not part of the Power Five, if you will. They're not part of the Big East and ACC, which are your notoriously strong basketball conferences. And so these, um, these mid-majors come in, and they come in as like, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 seeds, 14 seeds, 15 seeds. But they seeds. got a chance. That's right. I mean, even my LSU Tigers were taken down to the wire with by Yale, you know. And uh, Yale's a very strong basketball team. Yeah, they play smart smart basketball. Smart basketball. And a lot of these – and what's what's interesting about these, you know, in your power conferences, at least in, in my world, what I see, you know, on my television, um, and I could be wrong, um, but you see a lot of the power conferences, they've got the one-and-done guys, you know, the superstar athletes that are there for a year or two, and then they're out. Onto the NBA, yeah, and there a program just north of here that's uh, kind of known for that. Yeah, maybe Rupp Arena, you know, <laughs> Lexington, Kentucky, the Calipari team, um, the Calipari team. That's right. Uh, and he makes no bones about that, by the way, doesn't he? Doesn't no, he say, that's his thing, man. That's what they do. And so, anyway, you have those schools. But so, what makes these mid-major conferences sometimes really great basketball teams is that they've got these older senior level teams. You know, these teams that are... That have been playing together. They've been playing basketball together for four years. How about that? Yes. Yeah, uh, teamwork. Their fundamental defense, teamwork, great three-point shooting, um, lots of uh, screens and movement away from the ball. St- you know, it, it, they're not... There's, you, you'll see a lot, even on my team, LSU, you'll see when they need a basket, what do they do? They'll, like, clear out and they'll give their star player... That's kind of NBA-esque. NBA-esque, yes, and let him drive and try to get the foul or make the basket. But you don't see that from those mid-major teams. You know, they're, they're going to play some strong defense. And, and so, so it's really fun to watch because we don't see a lot of that during the year. And so they come into this big tournament. And, of course, a lot of them, you know, don't, don't move very far in the tournament. But every once in a while... You'll have a Cinderella team. Yes, Cinderella story that'll make its way through, and and so you know we'll we'll talk a little bit about you know some of these Cinderella teams and and what are the chances of them actually doing it. But you know one little note we saw last night a huge upset, um, the Mississippi State Bulldogs, number five seed, super strong team. They beat some great teams this year, so they go in. And they played the Liberty University Flames. Yep, and I got them right here. Lynchburg, I've got Virginia. I've got Mississippi State an easy win over Liberty. That's that's that's, that's on your bracket. That's on my bracket. So that was a no brainer. Mississippi right. State all the way. So what happened? Did Mississippi State not win? Liberty pulled the upset, the big Cinderella upset. But there are num- there's a number twelve next to them, so that's therefore right. they're they not supposed to win. They are a bracket buster, baby. They are a bracket buster. So how how far are we going to dig? Are we going to dig into this a little bit next segment? Or are we? Yeah. Wrap? Okay. I think we should do that because do that, I'm yeah. not going to reveal who I picked for for mine. By the way, I was going to save this, but this is my first year, believe it or not, of ever filling out a bracket. What? Yes, true story. All my years living in Las Vegas and all my sports ties and and, and all things that implies, I've just never done a bracket. True story. This year, our office we did a little thing. It's it's for charity. And I said, well, if it's for charity, and, and it's kind of cool, you, you put in 10 bucks, and if you win, half the money goes to you, half the money goes to charity. March of Dimes, by the way, another good oh, cause. that's awesome. And so I said, well, what the hey, I'll, I'll do it. And of course, I, I made some monster picks, and now I'm looking, apparently, according to you, I can already look down and see one that I got wrong, which was Mississippi State versus number 12, Liberty. But I mean, you're in good company. I'm sure most of the country Got that one wrong. I'm sure, yes. Because the, it's okay to pick, you know, maybe, like a lot of people are kind of on the Belmont bandwagon. And then mm-hmm. a lot of people kind of are kind of getting on, you know, some of these other mid-majors that are known basketball schools. They're sure. just not super strong. Liberty? Right. Who well, know, pe- Most people don't even know where that is. Well, you know? you know, looking back, I probably wish that I had just chosen Liberty and, and, and Justice for all. Ha! <laughs> Wow, it's time for a break. He takes a break, please, John. Uh, you are listening to the JT and Johnny Show. Sure to be back with a few more poorly worded puns by Johnny, but we might J- be back. JT is going to save the day. Stay with us. Wilkinson and Wiseman Funeral Home, 715 South Broadway, has been serving Portland with dignity and professionalism since 1906, being there to help you through the difficult days and decisions when a loved one passes away. Charles Wilkinson and the experienced staff at Wilkinson and Wiseman are there in your time of need. 
Wilkinson and Wiseman Funeral Home, 715 South Broadway in Portland. It's just a stone's throw from anywhere in Portland to Woodard BP and Tires, 300 North Broadway in Portland, home of those great Michelin tires. Whether you need tires for your car, truck, or any other vehicle, you need to go to Woodard BP and Tires. They have the biggest selection and the best prices on the best tire around. Michelin. Woodard BP and Tire Service, 300 North Broadway in downtown Portland. Cars and trucks at Al's Auto Mart are different. Not new, but not quite used either. In fact, they're so different, they needed a new name. The crack research team at Al's Auto Mart was on the case. It wasn't until one day during their lunch break that it happened. Researcher Alvin Philpot made the discovery of his career. Newsed. Newsed. Newsed cars and newsed trucks. Many hard to find in stock. Quality vehicles at wholesale prices and financing for everyone. Al's Auto Mart in Portland, Tennessee. Online at alsautomart.com. Oh, the smooth sounds of Keith Urban on a Saturday morning. You're yeah. listening to the JT and Johnny show. And Johnny, man, he really is hopped up on Mountain Dew, I'm going to tell you. It's not Mountain Dew. It's a lust for life. It's the, um, the, the extreme joy I get to seeing you every Saturday morning and sharing great music with our listeners, JT. Oh, oh, or it could be man. Mountain Dew. Who knows? Hey, man, before we go back to the NCAA yeah. bracket, I'm going to throw you a curveball this morning. Well, wait a second. Can I say I like Keith Urban? He seems like a nice guy whenever you, you hear about him. I just wanted to say that. I no, he is. I, I think he is a nice guy. And, um, you know, a guy that, you know, years ago had his own baggage like most folks. Sure. You know, come through, go through difficult times. And, and he's really kind of become an ambassador to Nashville. Yeah. I mean, he loves his city. It's home. You see him out and about. He does a lot of charity work. He and his uh, lovely wife and their family. I'm just yeah. surprised no one ever gives him grief for being like, isn't he from Australia? Oh, yeah, he's too cool to catch grief, apparently. Well, yeah, but, you know, our country music, you know, our big, big-time big country music people, shouldn't they be from, from America or from Texas or America. Tennessee or something? I don't know, from Australia? Well, not everybody can be George Strait. That's right, that's right. Well, <laughs> anyway, speaking of that, uh, you were going to throw me Hey, man, curveball. I'm going to throw you some curves. All right, I'm ready, man. Lay it on me. Go. I'm the guy that does that to you, so I guess it's I time know, to get... I know, I know. We're coming out of left field a little bit, So, he, but it is music-related. So I was driving in the car today. He's and I was driving. heading here to the station. Okay. And uh, I've got the old XM rolling. I don't always run the XM. You know, I like my little, my uh, other stuff on, on the radio typically. But I had some XM because my kids just have to have it on 24-7. Okay. And um, ended up scrolling through the, uh, you know, 70s on 7 and 80s on 8 yes. and 90s on Familiar. 9 mm-hmm. and all that sort of thing. And so I got to thinking, so, Johnny, if we had to go through a decade, if I gave you a decade. Yes, Okay. Spit out to me one of your favorite either albums or artists of that decade. And they don't have to come from that decade, but it may it may go back to your days, your early days of maybe a group that you loved during that period. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah. So meaning so they don't have to have had an album in the eighties or seventies or two thousands or whatever, but in, in that period of your life, would you listen to? Here we go. Ready? I'm ready. The nineties. Uh, 90s, I got to say, uh, Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam. Yeah. Um, you know, what's ironic is that I, when they first came out, like so many things, I, I was like, eh, meh, a little hard for, a little, little too, too hard rock for me. But my roommate at the time loved Pearl Jam. Mm-hmm. And so typically on a, on a, on a, on a week, our week would go like this. I would go to class. I would come home, clean the apartment, um, then go back to class. And then I'd come home and my roommate would be, jamming out to to Pearl Jam and he had my stereo up at level 12 and blowing out my speakers but um listening wow. to that Pearl Jam no early Britney Spears I was getting there okay <laughs> just kidding okay Pearl right, Jam yeah Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam. I love Pearl hey Jam. look there and I'm kind of the same way I, I was not um that's not my normal cup of tea that's not my go-to genre of music really you know but that's a quality band you yeah. Know, great, great band. Great choice. Okay, here we go. Okay. 70s. Hmm. Yeah, you know, well, we wee little tyke. I'm not going to say Leonard Skinnard because Sweet Home Alabama should have never been played at Texas Stadium like it was several years ago. Um, Ooh. 
my 70s, man, and this is maybe not so much when I was that age of right. a tyke, but now I'm going to, man, I'm going to have to roll with Kansas. Probably if, well, no, I don't think there's a probably about it. Uh, they are universally thought of in that era, the greatest musicians, live musician players in rock music. Yeah. And by the way, it's, it's interesting. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, super talented, shout out to my, my wife. She got baptized at, uh, last year at a church called freedom church in Gallatin sure. and their house band did, uh, carry, carry on my wayward son as a oh. cover to start off the church. And they rocked it, man. Yeah. It was fantastic. I, when they first started, I said, Oh my goodness, a church band trying to pull this off. That's, right. that's ambitious. And they did a great job, but yeah, just that, that one song itself, it takes you, it's got probably three or four hooks within the whole. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. yeah. So Kansas, man, those guys are just fantastic. In fact, there's an interesting story about Kansas is there was a show where they were opening up for, um, um, Aerosmith. Okay. And they were rocking the house and th the crowd kept on wanting encores and they kept on giving them encores. And as the story goes, the lead singer of Aerosmith, Steven Tyler, he walked up and he unplugged, he unplugged their power uh, and, at, during the song. <laughs> Sounds like, and Steven he was like, Tyler no, no one's going to come show us up, but apparently yeah, they, they would open Madonna. up. But yeah, seventies, yeah. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go Kansas. That's a great choice. You know, my uh, church band a few years ago played. Uh, Here we go. Pink Floyd's The Wall. Really? Yes, it's Easter Sunday. Really? <laughs> That's bold, sir. Yeah, it is. We you probably is. had you probably had most of the uh, congregation saying, "Wow, this is incredibly awesome way to go." And then you probably had some of those get off my lawn types who were like, "Huh." What's he playing in here? Well, that's some of that new Christian music. That's what are they? That, <laughs> what's happening to my Christian music? I'm no, like, I think it's funny. And, and, and Sandy Patty. Right. Full disclosure. Uh oh. We didn't. We didn't do the whole song. We we played. Uh, we we played the opening to Pink Floyd's The Wall, and then uh, got into the song, and then we transitioned because it had a chord structure similar to the opening that we were our, our song that we were going to do. I like it. So we had a drama piece that went with it, with okay. the wall. It was being broken down. Oh, I like that. And uh, Did y'all do the We Don't Need No Education, though? That's what I want to know. Did no, you? we didn't okay. do that. <laughs> I was wondering. Now, the video, did you ever see the video as a kid? Oh, yeah. I mean, that gave me nightmares with the kids on the um, that, that, that big, tall ramp, right. and then they fell down into the meat grinder. Right, yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. I, yeah. So why do you use that at your church service, JT? Uh, yeah, thanks. How'd Appreciate that work that. out that for you? So, no, 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 it was fine. You know. All right, so we got that. I like yeah, this game. So, yeah, it's fun. I'm ready. Okay, so, uh, man, 80s? Yeah, 80s. Okay, so <clears throat> that's my wheelhouse, Bubba. Right. I think, in fact, my buddy at work who's younger than me, he's in his late 20s and 80s, he, he just doesn't like anything about 80s music. And I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you? But 80s, <clears throat> probably 1984 was, that was the year for the album because obviously 1984, Michael Jackson's Thriller. Oh, I know. But perhaps one of my most iconic, and this is what I'm going to go with, the, the title, 1984, the album, Edvard Halen and Company, Van Halen, baby. That's that's my eighties. I mean, I could say so There's many so things. There's so much you could have said. I mean, there are, um, but that's you know that's got a nostalgic tie to my brother who went and saw Van Halen and okay. um, even snuck in a camera. He had one of those little disc cameras back in the day, and he he came back and had these real blurry pictures of of Eddie playing. And and, and this was my big question for. Um, I said, how did they do the song Jump? Because in the song Jump, if you recall, it's got a, it's let's borrow the word. It's got an epic keyboard part and it's got an epic guitar part and they go concurrently on the track but eddie played both of them so i was even as a kid i was like matt how how did eddie do that and he explained it and it was, he said it was great he uh, basically just did it all on the guitar um and then of course he went back and forth because you have to have that intro with the yeah. uh, keyboard part but 1984 was just a, an iconic or wait so i'm you're blowing my mind here i didn't know this information yes what's that so you're saying eddie van helen played both the yeah. keyboard part and the and the guitar part. Yes, and I think from what I from the way so I got he kinda, it, so he kind of swung the guitar and he did the opening on the keyboard. He did, but I think he did the solo, which I love the the yeah, keyboard yeah, yeah. solo. I think he just rolled that all into the guitar. Now I wasn't there, and you're going, you're, I'm going on a, and this was a curveball, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I wasn't ready for this question. Right, right, right. And right. this is a conversation from 30 years ago. Right. But it was apparently it went off well. But I always wondered how you know sometimes when you have the studio 
track how they ended up translating that live. And, yeah. you know, he saw them in concert there at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas, way back when, but uh, 1984, one of my favorite albums from the 80s by Van Halen. Uh, that's great. So a little side note there, you mentioned Jump. We, uh, we were at a youth camp. Uh, of course, I got to throw my little Christian, you know, uh, tidbit in here. There is a song back in the 90s that was uh, very popular called Celebrate Jesus. And, and and during the during those days is when I was a young youth pastor, we would take groups up to youth camps. And so they have these bands that would play and and that and it has it wasn't meant to be this way. But the structure of the opening to jump. Is very similar to the structure of Celebrate. this song. Yeah, I know the song. Yes, dun, you're right. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, you know. And so, so another one you. So tied they in. break into. So they. So the band is breaking into. They're doing the opening for Celebrate Jesus. But the whole crowd of teenagers yells. Jump! <laughs> you know, ah, in there. I love it. Yeah, and they break into Van Halen, you know, while they're doing it. So it was it was quite interesting. I so, like that. I like okay, that. Okay, eighties was such a great decade. You got to go to another. You did. You mentioned you you gave a nod to Thriller, which for me that was the iconic album, the Michael Jackson album. Oh yeah, you know, of course. But but for me during that time period, that that's something that was just it was that was in the, in the sweet spot of my high school years, early high school years. And uh, you couldn't go anywhere with that video. You remember when Thriller? Well, in, 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 at a time where MTV was at its zenith, the, the video, you go back and watch some of those old videos, those MTV videos mm -hmm. on YouTube now, and you're going, wow, we really watched some of this stuff? No, we gathered together to watch them together. We, I would watch them. When, every... when they had like debuts, when certain mm -hmm. albums were going to debut, you'd get in a group with a, in a room with a bunch of people, and you'd watch the opening, the debut of it. Yeah. But that video particularly, Thriller, oh, I mean, yeah. the, the, the long version. I, I actually remember as a kid, we went over to our next door neighbor's house just to watch the Thriller video. And these are adults that did right. that. And I was a kid, and I just it just blew my mind. I mean, it right. was kind of scary, and the dancing was... Don't, don't, don't remember that. Oh, my by the way, you can't yeah. see me over here, but I'm doing the actual the monster dance to Thriller. Right. It's pretty good right. too, by the way. Oh yeah, he took. By the way, he took a swig of Mountain Dew right before he did that. But would you stop? Yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> All right, so '80s is good stuff, man. That's All right, good decade. I think we're so. done with this game. I'm getting nervous here. I don't want to get one wrong. Well, it's it's your perspective, so you oh. can't get one wrong. That's a good point. That's right. So, how about a? Do you have a favorite of all time? That's hard to ask, isn't it? Favorite, favorite of any decade. Any yeah, time. it's eighties. I mean, because I mean, just from the nostalgic point of view, that right. was the the my coming of age, right? For, for lack of a better term, right. you know, graduated high school in ninety one. So, um, oops, I just said my age. Scratch. You did press the dump button. Rewind. Yeah. Um, but no, the eighties. That's that's my generation. Um, and I think everybody kind of, I think everybody kind of gets that get off my lawn mentality when you start talking about different different decades. They have their favorites. Um, they all have such um, value. I mean, even going right. back to the '60s. I mean, how can you not love you know Buddy Holly, um, things like that. Now, Ooh, as we yeah. get as we get after the turn of the century, it kind of all starts molding together. For like, so for me to like try to pick out the two thousand, the aught tens versus the aught twenties. Right. I get a little muddy. Big mash. It just kind of gets, I don't know. Well, you know, the it, really that late 90s to early 2000s, you get into your boy bands. Yes, You exactly. know, your NSYNCs and your uh, Backstreet Boys. Well, I met Joey Fatone uh, in, in Las Vegas, by the way. Cool. Yeah, well, he was a nice guy. Yeah. But yeah, I never got into the boy bands. Respect to their talents, but never. Right. I mean, I didn't wear my, and I didn't think any guys did, but now I know guys my age that back then, you know, they were, NKOTB or in sync and they're right. really into it. And I'm like, wow, okay. You know, hmm, don't get it really. No. And don't get it at all. Now you no. mentioned Britney Spears. Right. That was my that was my bit in in, in Las Vegas when I was Santiago the Gondolier. Remember I was okay. remember I was the right. <clears throat> the half Norwegian, half Italian gondolier on the, the boats in Vegas. What, I'd say, you oh, did a little baby one more time. I would, I would sit there, I'd say, of course, I love you, Britney Spears. She is my favorite. She is my favorite. And, uh, oh, Brit I got you. They would say, Britney Spears, she can't sing. I would say, oh, I didn't even know she was a singer. I just thought she looked good on the, you know, anyway. Oh, you're going there, aren't you? No, well, I was my, that was my bit in Las Vegas. Gotcha. I had to make the tips. Gotcha. You, you know? had to make the tips. Yeah, that's what it was that's about. That's it. 
Well, that's right. Very good. Well, hey, man, look, we were supposed to have a conversation about March Madness, but our uh, – But you went boy band. I went boy band. That's yeah. okay, man. I mean, we, we went jump, and every every epic rock, hard rock song that we came up with, somehow JT managed to uh, insert that and meld it into his church service. And that's genius, by the way. <laughs> that's how you get the youth on your side, man. That's that's good stuff. Yeah, we didn't we didn't even talk about the like the Almond Brothers and <sighs> met them too. Oh yeah, they were on a tour bus uh, at, uh, right there at Lake Texoma in Texas, and some this was just, we didn't we didn't go country music at all. I know, man. We didn't even get to Florida Georgia Line. Wait, is that country? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh. laughs> right, but you did mention Keith Urban coming out of the break, so there's yeah. That. Not mean. Let's not even. We don't even have time right now. So let's go to a break. Let's yeah, so save this segment. We're gonna come back and we're gonna spend uh, another a half hour on bro country. No, I'm just kidding. I got my snaps, <laughs> and he's got his snaps ready. You're listening to the JT and Johnny Show right here on WQKR in Portland, 101.7 FM. It's a beautiful Saturday. It's Give us a listen. Be, we'll be back right after this. It's the sound of a car that now needs to visit Blankenship Collision Center. This area's premier body shop. Blankenship's state-of-the-art facility at 1011 Highway 52 West in Portland offers a lifetime guarantee on repairs. With three locations, they're also in Hartsville and Lafayette, Blankenship has been making banged-up cars look like new again since 2008 and works with all insurance companies. Don't keep driving a car that needs to see a doctor. Take it to Blankenship Collision Center for a free estimate. They're open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. until 5 p.m. For more information, call today, 615-745-9602. Blankenship Collision Center, 1011 Highway 52 West in Portland, a proud sponsor of Portland Panthers Athletics. CEMC wants to warn its members to be on alert for scams that are targeting utility customers. Scammers are using a variety of methods, including phone calls and emails, to solicit members' credit and debit card information. If you have any doubts about the legitimacy of any call, email, or visit from someone claiming to be from CEMC, contact CEMC directly at 1-800-987-2362. Being well-informed can help you avoid becoming the next victim. Now, McDonald's helps you find a little joy every day with its one, two, three dollar menu. Get some of your favorites for less when you have a juicy McDouble or have some of our small world famous fries for just a dollar each. But an offer this good can only last for a limited time. So hurry in and add a little joy to your day with the one, two, three dollar menu. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Have you ever been on a shopping trip, out to dinner, or enjoying a night out with friends just to get home and realize you've left your debit card somewhere? We've all been there. Now there's Card Valet. Card Valet is an easy-to-use app that allows you to turn your debit card off when you've lost it or suspect it's been stolen. Plus, there's never a fee for this service. Visit us online at thefarmersbank.net or stop by the Farmers Bank today and see how Card Valet can make your life easier. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. You're listening to the JT and Johnny Show. And he's snapping right here on 101.7 WQKR. We're halfway through the first hour. Had a good talk about some music. We were talking a little bit about the bracket, JT. and I saw A little that, bracketology. Yeah. And let me, let me throw you just a quick, not a curveball necessarily, but yeah. there's something I, I got a call yesterday. You got a call. I got a call from, and it was an 817. I'm a 214 area code on my phone. So you know these robo calls that call that have a, have a number disguised to be similar. Right. So I answered it. And it was some young lady who claimed to be from the IRS. Now, she... Sp- Seriously, I've heard about these calls. Yeah, she spoke very broken English. Um, and I, I said, oh my goodness, what's going on? She said, she said the police were going to be no. at my door in less than an hour. Oh my goodness, I said. Oh no. Yes, I was scared. Let's see. To keep them at bay, they just needed your credit card number. That's all they needed. Now... 
all I could think was, okay, my m the lovely Mrs. Hannum who has done our taxes all these years, who is a certified public accountant, by the way. I'm and like, quite a good one. Yes. I'm like, oh, my goodness, honey, what have we done? Because she said we, I mean, for the last seven years now, we've, we've miscalculated our taxes. They are on their way, but she can save the day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. How could she save it? Well, that? all she needed was a credit. But then I just, then I said, well, I said, ma'am, so are you with the IRS? Click. She hung up on me. That's, she did, wow. And so she I called. She didn't even want to play. So I called back. Okay. A gentleman answered. Very broken English. Um, and he said, weren't you, I don't want to do, I don't want to be disrespectful. And no, do, yeah. But he, he said, weren't you just speaking with my associate? I said, yeah, we, we got, you know, we got cut off. And. He puts on pause and he says, and then he hangs up on me. Oh, no. So I called them back and I was like, can you please place me on a do not call? And they hung up on me. Now, guess what they did? What'd they do? They started blowing up my phone and leaving me voicemails. I got like seven voicemails from these people yesterday claiming that the IRS was coming to arrest, arrest oh, me. Oh, my God. I ended they up just, wouldn't talk to you. Well, no. And so I was going to call them back and I... I shouldn't have done this. Maybe it's a little bit of my, my dad in me, but I was going to call back and just let someone hear that I was getting irritated, but they blocked me. And so I'd call back and my number was blocked. And then literally 30 seconds later, I would call and they would call back, call me back and give me a voicemail. So but you couldn't answer the phone. And, and I, I could answer them, but they, they, I couldn't call them, but it got, I mean, it got me irritating. And I know no, my, most people aren't falling for these things, but I think obviously I don't think they were in here in the United U.S. of A. making these calls. I can't believe you just didn't give them their credit cards. That's all they wanted was your credit card number. I know, and I almost posted something on the Facebooker yesterday and like said, "Oh my gosh, I could have gotten arrested." But fortunately, um, by the way, you can negotiate with the IRS because they wanted fifteen hundred, but I only had to give them three hundred, and that kept me from getting arrested. That would have been so embarrassing at work. <laughs> and I was going to put that, but you know what? I would think that there was a segment of my friends on Facebook would been right. like, "No." John, that's a scam. Don't do it. And then yeah. I don't want to <clears throat> have people because sometimes I come, come, I joke around and come across maybe a little more dense than I am. I mean, right. I'm pretty darn smart. I mean, I'm from Texas, right? So, hey, I, I got two native Texans in my family, and so. I married well. So, I mean, obviously, that's right. Um, anyway, so that was an interesting call for me. By the way, full public announcement: if you get a call from the IRS, apparently the IRS does not make phone calls; they will notify you in writing. So, in writing, only. You know, my my uh, public service announcement out there: if you get any calls from the IRS, um, just tell them no, thank you, because they are non legit as we say jt non-legit anyway that just came to me so back to our bracket man Please. i want to know we want to know who you got or i can tell you who i have um and we always do this in full disclosure i did two brackets jt oh yeah well since it's for charity i figured and it was my first time i figured i would do two just just for the fun because it right you know that that could help out more charitable causes and give me Twice so, you know, if you go through the list, mm -hmm. you know, there are some verifiable bracket busters, a couple of them that have happened, you know. I, I, and I think for the most part, a lot of people feel like they're kind of still in the game a little bit. What do you mean in the game as far as bracket filler outers or as far as yeah, Well, teams? meaning that they didn't take, you know, there weren't there weren't a ton of. No, there's not like a monster bracket. The first, I mean, the big the big dollars are still around, right? Right. Right. So you're So if you took a loss in you know like if you were a big mississippi state fan and you had mississippi state winning that first round game and, and they went packing right you know, um that's going to hurt your bracket but it may not destroy your bracket you probably got them losing in the next game right, right? exactly so exactly. i I'll, I'll tell you since you're working on this i'm going to tell you who i had in my final four. Oh, in your final four uh-huh okay. so my first bracket and this is the one i gave a lot of thought to and this is the one i'm, I'm putting out there i've got duke Smart, smart, right? Virginia, North yeah. Carolina, and I'm not sure how they ended up there, but I got Red Raiders of Texas Tech, baby. And the final four, yeah, yeah. And then I've got Duke and Virginia with Virginia wow. winning. Now, what, I, what, I, uh, what, bra oh, there's Texas Tech. See, so now I still maintain that my I've been saying all along. So if you want my hard my hard prediction, I'm I know going why you Virginia. have Texas Tech. Why is that? I think they have a pretty. They've had a pretty easy path. Yeah, well, they got to get past Gonzaga. That would be the. Um, no, they don't. Yeah, no. They, ultimately they will in the Elite Eight if that, if yes. that comes down to. Now. Yeah, but they could, but they got a pretty pretty good path all the way there. They've got Michigan. In my other bracket, I've got North know. Carolina winning. North Carolina winning it all. So 
now we're on a recorded line, as we like to say in some businesses. We've got a show here, so Virginia is my pick. Um, my my second second run through had me with North Carolina. So this time would it be? It wouldn't be next week. It'll be in a couple weeks. We'll know the right. the truth. And so and you can say, "Wow, Johnny, your first bracket." And you, right? You were a, a prognosticator. You predicted it all, right? So, who do I, you like? I think um, Duke is a. Um, they've got a sh- really strong team. Yeah, well, those are big, big shoes to fill. Ooh, I like that. You went for the shoes. Uh, apparently, too big. Too, too big. Which, by the way, look, check it out. Since my Mountain Dew. I've got some Zion shoes going on here, buddy. Oh, man, you sure do. It's time for – Johnny needs some new shoes, man. It's just pathetic. Man, it's time. Yeah. Well, hey, my point is is that I wonder if if they have the horses uh, to go to the – when it gets down to the nitty-gritty. You know, Duke's Duke's lost a couple games this year that they should have won. Some of the prognosticators say they have got enough to get maybe to the Final Four, but – don't see them making it all the way. Uh, Duke Schmook. I don't know. Uh, we know. got a we've got a good we've got a fellow good friend, a mutual really good friend is a Duke fan. Should we give him a shout out? Isn't it uh, old Dave Cantrell? Oh yeah, Dave Cantrell. Great guy, great, great friend. Guy, Duke fan. Loves Duke. Yeah, we played on a youth basketball. We had a youth basketball team, you know, last year or year before last, and mm-hmm. and he's and I remember him saying specifically when we do the uniforms, just just make sure anything you do, but don't get powder blue uniforms. And I'd forgotten that, and I thought for for because he's from North Carolina, and so oh, that's the powder blue, right? And so I thought, oh well, yeah, he's just talking. He doesn't want the. I mean, the, but the Duke blue is just like normal blue, like Kentucky blue, like a lot of other blue. But that powder blue is a really nice color. So we'll we'll order the powder blue. We'll order the pow- Wow, we'll order the powder blue. And so we ordered. I ordered the powder blue, and then realized once it came in that he said no. That's the only color he did not want. <laughs> And so all the team we had to wear North Carolina blue all season long. Well, then there's no way that you possibly could have misconstrued anything that he, you know, any direction that he gave. No, that's never happened. Not at all. Maybe he's listening this morning. He might be be the first time he might be, but Liberty, you got Liberty winning. JT just predicted Liberty. The final four, the winners, wait, no, no, no. Liberty beat Mississippi state. Okay. Um, you know, Baylor beat Syracuse, but that was an eight and a nine. Okay. Um, you know, Murray State put the upset on Marquette, and you think, well, Murray State Marquette, that's a five and twelve, folks. A twelve beat a five. That's that's pretty amazing, you know. And uh and I think I think that's the most common the five twelve matchup is the most common matchup that uh is subject to uh upsets. Okay. I've heard. It's starting to feel like math class in here for me. I don't know. I don't know, man. So, anyway. So, who do you have in your Final Four? Who do you have winning this thing? You well, didn't bring your bracket, did no, you? No, I didn't. JT. But, but I'm going to have – I mean, I have I have Virginia as well. In the four, Final Four? Yep. Okay. I have uh, uh, – and I have uh, – uh, one of my brackets, I do have Duke defying okay. the odds and, and taking it. But who do you have winning? Duke. In okay. one of them. In one of in them. In one of them. And then I have Virginia in the other one. Okay. All right. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. Because I want to get back to some music things. I mean, I love your bra- I love watching JT go through his phone and, and give me math questions about uh, the 5 and the 12. <laughs> You're killing me, man. No, no, no. It's awesome. It's awesome. I learned. I've been learning from you, JT. Have you? Well, and I have. And, and look, and this, like I said, this is my first time to do a bracket, and I'm, and I'm looking forward to the games, and that's, that's really cool. That to do a bracket, it, gives, it makes it exciting. Right. Well, speaking of exciting. Oh. Something's coming up on March the 28th, next Friday. Next Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Tell us are, about it, John. Well, we are going to be in studio on a weekday, Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock. On a weekday. On a weekday. In fact, the whole day we will have different members of the staff, different radio show hosts, all filling one-hour blocks for that entire day. It's an event. It's a, it's a fundraising. What do they call it? A, a radiothon, if you will, um, I believe, for Relay for Life, which is a charity that um, – is very closely associated to the station and will be on the air. So we want to make sure that our listeners out there know that they can tune in and, f- and hear us on a weekday. JT, you got a look on your face. No, I just got it. It's going to go back to math and I don't want to do that. <laughs> no, do it. We got it. We, JT, got, I got a text. You got a text. I got a text from a listener, from, from a listener. Ooh, yes. Would, and he's listening. And, uh, 
He's tell he's telling me to tell him that I need he needs to take the Gators as his sleeper team. The Gators, the as Florida sleep- Gators. Yeah, and uh, I know this guy's a Gator fan. Yeah, um, obviously. And I think this guy knows that I'm not a Gator fan. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so Billy, you know, old Billy Murphy. Ah! Shout, out, shout out to Billy Murphy, one of our friends in in uh, Middle Tennessee in Ooh, the Hanksville yeah. area. By the way, his wife does this uh, stuff for people that need like decor for their, oh, for their man, house she's a, or inside. Yeah, hey Billy, text me how how we can uh, get in touch with uh, your wife to uh, throw her some business, man. Keep see me a text on how we can do that. Really cool stuff like welcome signs. She does the welcome like signs it. and the uh, outdoor decor and all of that and it's it's truly fantastic. And I mean Billy's my friend, but you know Tiffany runs a show over there at that house. Well, isn't that, isn't that, isn't that how it works at any It does. Successful it does. Venture? So you're looking for something. I don't know what you're doing. Man, she'd give me a card. Oh, she gave you a card. I've got it right here. It's called oh. Tiffany's Wooden Things. Tiffany Murphy. It's Tiffany's Wooden Things at gmail.com. Do you think she minds us giving a shout out of her phone number? It's on her card. Uh, let me see. Here, look at that. Tiffany's Wooden Things. I mean, if you like need a like cool welcome sign, she does custom stuff, but it's really neat stuff, man. She's... Very popular, but it's it's you know right, like, and it's Tiffany's T I F F A N Y S Wood W O O D the letter N things T H I N G S at Gmail Tiffany's Wood N the letter N things at Gmail dot com yeah and uh, check her out send her an email let her uh, let her do some work for I you I mean I think she's done some stuff for colleges so. They would even for they may do an LSU thing or she. I bet if I gave her the artwork, she could do like a TCU welcome thing for me. Uh, she's pretty talented. I think she could do just pretty Very much, much anything. So. Well, we so want to support her. her. And anytime someone uh, texts the show, I don't know if she has like an Etsy shop or anything like that. You know, know. probably I mean, would have put that on. That's beyond. Was the there realm. like a Facebook? I think there was a Facebook logo on that card too. Was there? Well, I already put it back in my wallet. Yeah, Let me go through all my twenties: twenty, 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 right. twenty, twenty. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, it's on Facebook. She's yeah. got a Facebook icon. So you go to Tiffany Murphy on Facebook. And if you're and interested, just tweet, just just send us a tweet, send us an email, give us yeah, a call. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, yeah, up. awesome. A little, little free pub. There's some her. little local flair pub. So, so people out there, just absolutely. If you want some, if you want some free shout outs, just just text JT <laughs> yeah, and mention exactly. the Florida Gators, and we'll switch it to <laughs> no, to don't that. mention the Florida Gators. Oh, I'm sorry. But relay for life, man. Man, it's gonna be fun. It's I'm excited. I'm excited to be around the other radio personalities and kind of just mix it up a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. We always. Well, what love- we need mm-hmm. is we need JT and John listeners to be on, be ready, on standby. Yes. To call in mm-hmm. and and or or, or, in other, or or in some other way give to relay for life, and uh, so we can win the hour. Now I don't have all the details on how they can do that. Right, we and, will. So just listen at five from five to six next Friday. Mm-hmm. That's that's drive time, baby. It so, is. So you know, you just on the way home. And JT will put it out on our on our Facebook. If you haven't right. followed our Facebook show, right? Uh, the JT and Johnny Show, or just JT and Johnny. JT and Johnny. Show. JT and Johnny Show, just like on Twitter at JT and Johnny Show. Um, right. So check that ways. out because we'll put the information there. And 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 folks, we want the JT and Johnny listeners. We want some of our artists that have come on the show. We want some others to jump in there and. Uh, and uh, help us uh, win, the, win, win the day, man, during our hour. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So when we get back, I, I want to I touch a little bit on this whole streaming thing that's going on. There's a lot of stuff going oh, on in the news. Yeah. And, the, and right now, the, the music business, it's, it's, it's in flux, sir. Right now, it's just all up, up in the air, and no one knows what's going to happen. Everybody's got predictions. But it's safe to say that things are a-changing, and um there's some ambiguity there's some animosity and there's some stress and there is just a lot happening here in the little city of nashville regarding the music business and then of course at 9 9 15 we've got our guest dave isaacs guitar guru teacher and now author coming on the show so it's going to be well it's going to be a great second hour i've enjoyed this one with you buddy but the second one we're going to even elevate our game and uh, we're going to be knocking down some threes in regards to radio okay Ooh. buddy I so dig it. when we get back, we're going to talk a little bit about music streaming and we're going to plug our guest and we're going to get ready for a, a great second hour. So just stay with us. JT and Johnny show. We will be right back. Maybe. So here I am. Uh, this is John Hannum and it looks like our ad stack is not working. So. This is what they call spontaneous advertisement. 
by right. Johnny of the JT and Johnny Show. Are you looking for an insurance agent? Are you just wanting to make sure that your people are covered in that time of need? Well, Farmers Insurance is the insurance com- company for you. Just look out to the Taylor Agency. They'll get you a good quote. They'll make sure you're taken care of from start to finish in the process. The Taylor Agency with Farmers Insurance. I need to do another advertisement? Yep. Are you looking for that special song for that special someone? Well, just look to U-Tunes. U-Tunes is the personalized songwriting company that is that unique gift idea for anyone who's done it all before. Forget the old tie. Forget the bouquet of flowers. Why don't you get him or her that special song that just says exactly how you feel? What you can do is you'll fill out our simple two-page questionnaire, decide what kind of music you like, and the U-Tunes, t- U-Tunes team will get together, and they will compose and craft a specifically unique song just for your occasion. They will record it professionally in a professional studio and have it delivered to that special someone on that special date. For that special gift, remember U-Tunes. Village Drugs. Love that place. Hey, you know Village Drugs has been serving the Portland community's pharmacy and drugstore needs for 40 years? Yeah, since 1978, Steve Blevins and the friendly people at Village Drugs have filled your prescriptions, answered your questions, and even helped keep you healthy or, when you're not feeling so good, actually feel better. Across from Sonic at 100 West 9th Street in Portland, it's Village Drugs. Are you looking for the perfect home near Portland, Tennessee? Maybe you're ready to sell. You need a real estate professional. Call me, Debbie Lambert, with Reed Realty. I have years of experience in real estate, and I know the process of buying and selling a home can be overwhelming, but let me use my experience to make this process easy. As a Portland resident for over 40 years, I've raised my children here. I'm very knowledgeable of this area and will work hard to get you the best price, the best terms. Come visit me and my daughter, Valerie Rogers, at Reed Realty, 615-672-0333 or 615-218-2605. Are you looking for the perfect home near Portland? Maybe you're ready to sell. You need a real estate professional. Call me, Valerie Rogers, with Reed Realty. I have years of experience in real estate. I know the process of buying and selling a home can be overwhelming. The real estate market is experiencing exciting growth. But don't go it alone. Call me and my mom, Debbie Lambert, at Reed Realty. 615-672-0333 615-672-0333 or text me 615-587-1448. Old Hickory Credit Union is excited to plant roots in the growing city of Portland. We are located at 103 Kirby Road at the corner of Highway 109 and Kirby Road. We're a full-service financial institution that is member-owned and not-for-profit. We are a federally insured state-chartered credit union. So if you need a checking account or a personal loan to pay bills or take a vacation, we can help. If you need an auto loan or a mortgage loan to buy the home of your dreams, come see us. We're here to serve you. Old Hickory Credit Union, making a positive difference in our neighbors' lives. Music, news, talk, and sports. WQKR Portland, 1270 AM and 101.7 FM. I don't know. It feels like summer is in the air, or maybe spring. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves. But it's baseball season. Were you not at the Were you not at the baseball field the other night? <laughs> summer was nothing on the minds of anybody. Just I know, I know, I we, know. We, we had to, we had to go though, man. It's like it's baseball time. It it is, but man, summer. What we were, I would, I was praying for a ninety five year, uh, ninety five degree day the other night. I was yes, just, I was like, give me the heat, give me the hottest day of summer versus I know, this we, cold. Uh, our, the, the concession stand at the park last night sold a lot of coffee and hot chocolate. That's oh, all they I could have, say. they could have price gouged on that coffee. <laughs> Absolutely. So, real quick, because we're okay. going to go to the news here in a moment. Okay, there is news Ooh. Uh, in the uh, music world, and, and it's been coming for a while. But recently, there's been a lawsuit. Um, you know, Congress had made some changes, and they're pro uh, music artist changes, things that they have put forth uh, to help the artist and the songwriter uh, do a little better with respect to the the new world of music and streaming and all that sort of thing. However, two major players in the music streaming business have filed a lawsuit against uh, a federal lawsuit to stop this legislation from moving forward, and it's Spotify and Amazon. 
Spotify, and Amazon. And so there's a debate that's out there now. I've got some friends in the music business. Some, I mean, some guys pretty high up in the publisher. You are well connected, sir. I got to give. Well, you that. no, not not that. I'm just saying oh, that these sorry. are these are some nationally recognized people that are major players and of course they're they're communicating through social media and other methods that you know after all these years they're they're dumping their spotify accounts and their amazon accounts and they're going to in their world they're going to apple music because apple is is playing along with uh, the new the new world in, in music and trying to do the best for the artists and of course it's not the perfect scenario uh but um what's your take on that john well, you or know what do you think I've got I've got a mixed bag of emotions here. First of all, when I hear you talking about that, and by the way, he's talking about how we how we all digest and all we, how we enjoy consume, and listen and consume yeah. our music. And right now, the the trend is now all streaming. In fact, if you look at uh, MP3 purchases and downloads um, via iTunes and other like all the different that those trends are spiraling downward. People right. every year are buying less and less MP3s. It's all moving to that streaming environment. And as we all know, the per, but the percentages paid to the songwriters and to the artists is, is significantly lower in the streaming. In fact, it's it's mind blowing how little the artists are ultimately getting paid. Yeah, and we're talking. I mean, this is career ending type of differences right i mean well, from it, what it used to be 10 years ago it is and, and we don't have too much time to unwrap it but no. what it's what it's creating is the environment now if you are an artist is in the way the way to make your money and it's not it's no longer downloads or cd sales or album sales it's getting on the road and performing and selling merchandise right those are the two revenue streams but these are the, my red flags right now first of all okay. these people they up up that up that you know that are dumping spotify and amazon things of that nature they are I'll say it. They're more our age, right? right? The listener out there, the teenagers, I don't think they give a patui about it. I think they're just like, I, I, I'm not paying for it. I would listen to whatever else is listening to. They're not, re they're not making a stand or they don't care necessarily about the royalties of songwriters or them. So I don't know that it's going to even right. and affect I think, much change. Right. I think what, what their model, what their mindset is, is if the, uh, to, is to that point that there's a whole generation of folks out there, multiple generations, that they're just going to consume music in the most cost-effective way they can grab it. Or the most convenient, yeah. In the most convenient way they can grab it. And so what these uh, professionals are saying, well, then, then we need to set a, we need to have a playing field that allows them to consume that music in the most convenient way possible, but adequately pays the artist and the songwriter for what their contribution, because it's their songs that they're they're doing. So there's the dance. So we, uh, so there in some ways the market forces at play here, or is an un, unfair playing field. You have students, you know, and others and young people that are essentially getting music for practically free, and then they are uh, uh, they're not earning the the money that they need to earn to support their families. And well, we're talking about like buy groceries. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is. It's, it's a problem. That's why I've, I've said before that so many of the professional songwriters in Nashville have all, but just moved out of town and picked different careers. But one, I, I got a little stop the presses on me, a little hesitation mm. because of Apple. Okay. I mean, as I do, ha I have an iPhone. I mean, right. I'm, I've got my MacBook over here, by the way. So I'm not, I have supported Apple with my purchases, but right. I do fear that they're, um, glowing. We want to help the songwriters. We are going to be proportionate. I just sometimes fear that it's all part oh, of no. their their grand design for everything to ultimately be all Apple. And so you got to be. I just I'm skeptical sure. even of them. I think right. So I think what it would be an an interesting ploy or or scenario. It would be that if the uh, songwriters were to be paid equitably for their contribution to the music business then there would be other companies that would come alongside. It wouldn't be that, that Apple sure. would not be the monopoly mm -hmm. of that. But right now, they're the only one that is choosing to understand. And, and, and in one sense, in, in their words, take the high road with respect to that and compensate them you know, officially. Let, let, you know what? Let's, let's unwrap it. We, we gotta get, how, how long until the news here, buddy? It's yeah, been... we got about uh, 40 seconds or so. Okay, so let's unwrap this because what we really I want to talk about is, is streaming versus 
I fear that streaming, A, the, the quality of the music that we get is is not of the quality that even you and I had when we were younger. Oh, quality for sure. Yeah. And that and people are willing to sacrifice that. And then the choices involved. You know, if you Google yeah. a particular song, especially in the classical realm, for example, you're going to pop up and it's not going to be the best recording that's out there as far as the, the performances are concerned. So I have I take issue with the whole streaming thing in those regards and it'd be worth unpacking a little bit more yeah i think we've got a little time after the break to uh to uh to do that as we invite our guest to who join just us. walked in the door ladies yes, and gentlemen just walked in dave so, isaacs is on the premises ladies and great. gentlemen so we're going to take a little news break we're going to come back and uh talk about streaming a little bit and then go right into our artists and we're we're so great glad you're here on wqkr Portland's problems with the city's police department have made a splash in the news section of the Tennessean newspaper. After Police Chief Anthony Hevner, Assistant Chief Duell Scruggs, and Lieutenant Ricky Ellis were suspended without pay, after an investigation found they had falsified documents relating to the department's firearms training, Local news outlets in Portland, including WQKR and the city's two weekly newspapers, all covered the story. Hefner received the longest suspension, 15 days, followed by 10 days for Scruggs and five for Ellis. According to a news story in Thursday's Tennessean, when a reporter called the department Thursday, Assistant Chief Scruggs said he was currently running the department while Hefner was serving his suspension. Scruggs' suspension, he said, would begin April 8th, and he confirmed that Ellis was currently serving his suspension. The story reiterated what a press release from Mayor Mike Callis pointed out last week, that discussions with officers in the department last fall indicated dissension, a lack of trust in the department's leadership, and a breakdown of proper protocol. Hebner has been chief in Portland since April 2016. He took the job over from Scruggs, who had been acting chief. The Tennessean story said that Hebner declined to comment and they were unable to reach Ellis. Other Nashville news outlets are also weighing in. WSM-TV Channel 4 has a story whose lead headline is Investigators Find Portland Police Faked Firearms Training Documents. Meanwhile, here in Portland, talk centers around the friction that many people say exists within the department and whether or not the measures taken by the city will solve those problems. A man was convicted of attempted murder in Nashville. He's now been found with drugs and handguns. Nathaniel Key is charged with several felonies, including being in possession of a weapon and possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute. Metro police were tipped off he might be selling drugs in the Inglewood area and then saw a car in a parking lot with known drug users inside. Detectives watched the area for more than an hour, and when Key showed up, they saw him meet with several of the people in the car, a meeting they said was consistent with a narcotics transaction. After the deal was done, officers approached the car and found heroin in the possession of the customer. Officers were also able to search the car and Key's house and reported finding drugs and guns. He's currently in jail. His bond set at $375,000. President Donald Trump's executive order Thursday on free speech on college campuses is getting some pushback from Tennessee's senior senator. Trump signed an executive order requiring colleges to protect free speech on their campuses or risk losing federal research funding. Federal agencies must now ensure that any college or university receiving research grants promotes free speech and the exchange of ideas and follow federal rules guiding free expression. Lamar Alexander, chairman of the Senate Education Committee and a Tennessee Republican, said legislators and agencies cannot just rewrite the Constitution. I don't want to see Congress or the President or the Department of anything creating speech codes to define what you can say on campus. The Constitution guarantees free speech. Federal courts define and enforce it. Wholesome 
and pure as the driven snow. It's the JT and Johnny Show, exclusively on WQKR Portland. Now sit back and enjoy content that is completely GMO-free and carbon neutral. It's the JT and Johnny Show. and Johnny show we are back and better than ever it's hour two on a Saturday how's it going my friend man it's going good but you know when you when you play that bumper music um don't play it off the record player man that record player skips a little bit did you hear that <laughs> I heard that little skip that's man. okay that? well in, in the you know with our conversation being about the streaming world and these these big topics right. um it's good that you went to the record player there a little old school buddy that yeah, was we'll impressive. Go vinyl baby Vinyl, right. yeah. So we were talking about streaming. And by the way, our, our guest, Dave Isaacs, um, he might be able to chime in a little bit. I'm sure he's got some opinions and probably some good knowledge, too. He probably may school us a little bit. But here's my issue with some of the streaming elements, okay? So okay. the other day, you know, I was talking about my buddy at work. His name's Dan, by the way. I guarantee you he's not listening because he sleeps later than this on Saturdays. Anyway, he... He doesn't listen to much classical music, right? Well, he might listen at 3 to 5 tomorrow afternoon. That's right. 3 to 5. Nice segue, JT. Um, but he was at, he, he's playing some music that's relevant right now, some stuff I never heard of, and it was great. And so I said, well, you know, something I like is classical. So I played. I wanted to play him Bach's Air on the G-String, G which is one of oh, my favorite great pieces. pieces. He never heard it before. Okay. So he searched it, and the first thing that popped up, he played it. And you're and like... It was electronica, and it was like not even good electronica. It was like someone's Casio keyboard or something. I'm like, Ugh. Uh, and then he played the next track, and we actually listened to that one, and it was, meh. Nah. It wasn't too good. You know, I would rather heard you know St. Martin's in the Fields or New York Philharmonic or mm -hmm. some some type of just really well done. And there's just literally thousands of versions out there. That's my problem with the streaming versus your own music library, the, the stuff that you have, is that you know what you have and you've got that one version, that one take, that one <laughs> quality recording, and you can play that. Streaming, in some ways, you type it in, you may not know what you're going to get. Right, even and, if you're building your own list. Yes. And I think most people, and we're talking a lot about our younger generation, my daughter, for example, she's, she's a Spotify nerd, and so she's got her, all her playlists. Daddy called you a nerd. But it's all oh, it's all based upon the artist's name, you know. It's because the style of music that she listens to is is just these, you know. You pull sure. up sure the algorithms decide what you what you're going to hear. That's right. And you pull it up, and she and then you down you're listening to it, and then it goes away. And she's got her different lists for different things, and and um, but I think those for those that have a broad music palette, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of different drawing from a lot of different ways. I don't know that the the, the Spotify realm is the way to do it. Now, for the hobbyist who happens to be a musician and puts out their own little, you know, music and stuff, you know, and has their own their own little little um, EPs. I've met several guys that, well, hey, I've got an album. I put some stuff on Spotify, you know, and he. So you can go and it's it's like Amazon. You just have this this long list of stuff. And they may end up find. in someone's shuffle, and that is, that is an advantage. That that is true. Right. There can someone can get their stuff out there, and and it's of a similar nature to someone, and they may get listened to because of someone's general preferences. And there, right. there's an advantage. Now, here's here's another, in my opinion, disadvantage. And I'm trying to remember. I'm, I'm having one of those senior moments, mm -hmm. in fact, as well. Um, something along the lines of Spotify and what I wasn't exactly a fan about. Mm -hmm. um, and I've completely at a loss here. Well, you know. All I can say is, is Dave Isaacs. Dave Isaacs comes in the building and mm -hmm. lose my brain. You lose your brain. Well, because I'm thinking about, okay, let me set this up. I played a, a songwriter. I remember Gary Cavanaugh, friend of the show, former guest. Sure. He invited me down to do. Is he on Spotify? I don't know. We'll have to ask him. Right. Um, but we did a round down at the Millennium House. Millennium Maybe House. Amazon. Yeah. And um, I got to playing and everything, and then this Dave Isaacs cat starts playing the guitar, and I was just I, I took my guitar and I just unplugged it and I threw it out in the lake. Well, first of all, there's no lake, 
And so I, you really didn't throw it out. No, I really didn't. But that and mentally, virtually, that's what I was doing. Wow. In my mind. Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes people. So so if someone is really great at their craft, mm-hmm. your response to that is to take your craft and just chuck it, or find just find another craft. Because if you can't, <laughs> it, like you said, if you can't be first, you're last. Yeah, you were the one it. that went Ricky Bobby. Right? I went Ricky See, Bobby. Boom. That's right. Right back yeah, at way you, to pal. go back at me, man. I like it. Hey, I pay attention, man. That's what I do. Shake and bake. I'm really, bo- <laughs> I <laughs> let's not even go down that road. <laughs> no. I really wish that I could remember, though. I had a, such an amazing, awesome, life changing, industry changing point to be made about right. the um, the whole streaming business. Oh, oh, I got it. I, f- I remembered. Okay, yes. go. I knew if I just kept on talking in circles, I'd find it. Go. So when we uh, we got iPods a year or two ago at the Hanum House. And you got iPods a year or two ago. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's a little, yeah, the iPod and, uh, we signed up for the hey, Apple folks, family. He said, he said a year or two ago, the iPod. Okay. Go. It's been, yeah, we were late to the party. I'll admit. Yeah. Can I please just make no, my life changing point before go. you make life changing point. So I purchased, we had the family plan for through Apple. It's like 15. I don't know how much it is. It's not really cheap. I mean, you add it up. It's another monthly bill. That's going to be. 15, 16, 17 bucks a month. Okay. And I purchased, I didn't have, all my CDs were downstairs. I didn't, I, my computer, I didn't have a means to just, so I purchased some of the albums that I had downstairs in my basement on CD, but I wanted to hear them. Yeah. So I spent like 10, 20, 30 bucks. Well, after we got rid of the family plan, I can no longer access those albums that I bought. They show up, but oh, you don't have the family sharing and I can't figure it out. And I'm like, but wait a second, I bought this. This should be an MP3 that should be, on my hard drive should be in there. It's mine. I this own is it through Apple. I believe so. Yeah. Well, then you do have it. I do. I just don't know it's, where. It's, yeah, it's on the cloud. Yeah, the cloud. Where it? Where is the cloud? That's what I want to know. Well, we'll have yeah. to ask our guest about that's this. A, that's a long discussion. There's I'm not no sure, I'm not sure you're prepared for. Johnny. So, so our guest today, Dave Isaacs, he's going to teach us how to be virtuoso guitar players. Nice. He's going to solve the problems of the music industry and explain wow. what we need to do. He's going to explain where we can find the cloud and where it exactly is. I, mean, I like he's to put, a, He's going to do all of that? Well, he's probably also going to pick the winner for the NCAA bracket while we're at it, too. Man, he's got a... I hope he wore his long pants today, man. That's what we do, man. We, By the way, if you're looking to, to be a guest on our show, just give me a call at 615-325-0803. That's a tall order. I don't know if you want to be a guest on our show. If you have, we, if you when we to. put the pressure on, this Ooh. is... This may be a small town, you know, country radio, but we're we are legit, epic, and at the at the, the forefront of the music scene. The forefront. Yes, we are. Um, what do they call those? We are the we are conquistadors of radio, sir. You just went conquistador on us. I did. All right. I hadn't heard any big phrases from you today. I said, you know what? Our our audience is thirsting for some multi uh, syllable words and some. And you did it. I did. Conquistadors of music. Oh, and now add a little inflection. I, I am like Juanito it. of the JT and Johnny Show. They are the conquistadors of all of music. You will learn about the streaming. You will learn about the NCA bracket. You will learn all things Portland, and most of all, you will have a good time. Uh, that sounds like a. A show I want to be a part of. I don't even know where I got that. I don't even know who that is. He's a new character coming out. Yeah, you had a character come out. Wow. I do. We'll call Joe Lesh, a former guest, and he'll he'll f- hook us up with a voiceover. We'll be in a cartoon, and uh, we can buy all the streaming songs we want. That's a, that's a great plan. We'll so be Rico, that's awesome. So tell me wh- the last place that you saw Dave Isaacs. You were you were talking. Was that the one with Gary Cavanaugh? That is the last time. No. I saw him again then at Gary Cavanaugh's birthday party at, uh, oh, at yeah. the, the Richards Pub. Richards. Richards. Richards now Cafe that guy, in White's Creek, baybe. What, what, Richards Cafe in White's Creek. That guy is worthy of a mention, okay? He owns this restaurant, and I, I've got this figured out. If you ever want to have a chance yeah, to perform. Yeah, but you're not in, ever, I'm not ever sure when it's open. Now, it's usually open <laughs> Sunday afternoons. But usually open other Sunday than that, I can't tell you how many times I've been there, and it's closed. Really? Yeah, but he has some odd hours. That's okay. But, but that's he supports okay. the song, like his little sign right there when you start would play. It's like if you didn't write it, don't play it. I love that's it. right. He's all that. about the song. But if you play, you better be ready. He will jump up on stage and start playing with your song. And, and, and he does. It's his place. He doesn't need permission. Yeah, he. Yeah. And he will pick an instrument. He'll just start jamming out on it mid song. He's quite a character. But that's the last time I saw I saw Dave Ice. Okay, that was a good time. So it's that's been, cool. So yeah, 
I mean, I'm getting, getting, I'm making the rounds, buddy. Man, so we've kind of uh, covered the spectrum today, man. We've we have. talked about baseball a little bit. We talked about March Madness yes. a little bit. We've talked about um, the streaming world mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, we've talked about, um, you know, gigs at the at Richard's Cafe. Right. We've talked about what's going to be like to have you know Dave Isaacs here. I'm ready to get to the actual. I am, and we'll go away with this. In music, when you're classically trained, you learn about the three B's of music. Do you know who they are? Beethoven, Bach, and Brahms. Right. But on the JT and Johnny show, the three B's are baseball, basketball, and Ricky Bobby. (laughs) Ha! That is quite encouraging today, my friend. You just. Do we want to be associated with Ricky Bobby? Absolutely, we do. That's just because. And call, call Norton Jr. I don't know. Right now, I'm thinking of a new theme called Saved by the Commercial. What do you think about that? Saved by the Commercial sounds like a plan. You're listening to WQKR, the JT and Johnny show, right here in Portland at 101.7 FM, AM 1270 on your dial. Uh, come back. We've got Dave Isaacs right here with us. You don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. CEMC wants to warn its members to be on alert for scams that are targeting utility customers. Scammers are using a variety of methods, including phone calls and emails, to solicit members' credit and debit card information. If you have any doubts about the legitimacy of any call, email, or visit from someone claiming to be from CEMC, contact CEMC directly at 1-800-987-2362. Being well-informed can help you avoid becoming the next victim. Now, McDonald's helps you find a little joy every day with its one, two, three dollar menu. Get some of your favorites for less when you have a juicy McDouble or have some of our small world famous fries for just a dollar each. But an offer this good can only last for a limited time. So hurry in and add a little joy to your day with the one, two, three dollar menu. Prices and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Have you ever been on a shopping trip, out to dinner, or enjoying a night out with friends just to get home and realize you've left your debit card somewhere? We've all been there. Now there's Card Valet. Card Valet is an easy-to-use app that allows you to turn your debit card off when you've lost it or suspect it's been stolen. Plus, there's never a fee for this service. Visit us online at thefarmersbank.net or stop by the Farmers Bank today and see how Card Valet can make your life easier. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The cars and trucks at Al's Auto Mart are different. Not new, but not quite used either. In fact, they're so different, they needed a new name. The crack research team at Al's Auto Mart was on the case. It wasn't until one day during their lunch break that it happened. Researcher Alvin Philpot made the discovery of his career. Newsed. Newsed. Newsed cars and newsed trucks. Many hard to find in stock. Quality vehicles at wholesale prices and financing for everyone. Al's Auto Mart in Portland, Tennessee. Online at alsautomart.com. Well, happy Saturday morning to everybody out there in Portland, Tennessee, and beyond. Welcome back to the JT and Johnny Show. JT, we got a, we've had a good one so far. We've had some fun, haven't we, buddy? We've just kind of goofed off for about an hour and plus. Yeah, That's it's okay. been lots of fun. That's been right. Good. And by the way, who, by the way, just for just for everybody out there, you had Duke. Is that right? Duke in one, Virginia in the other. Okay. Well, speaking of uh, speaking of. Duke. And that Remember means the, if, if that means for Duke to get there, they have to beat LSU at some point. They're in the same bracket, and that's going to happen. I, I hate it, but it's probably going to happen. But we are not uh, expert prognosticators in the basketball realm. We are not bracketologists. One thing we do know a, a little thing or two because we've heard a thing or two is about music, right? Man, yes, I'm excited for this Farmers Insurance Artist Spotlight today. Let's do it. Welcome to the show, Dave Isaacs. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great. Thanks Man, for having me. Thank you so much for making the drive up, and you're just a, you're a, I just just on the break, ladies and gentlemen, you uh, told us you're originally from New York. Is that right? Indeed. Don't hold it against me. No, no one does that. <laughs> we love all parts here. It's one of my favorite places in the world. I love New York. I I have not been to New York yet. And what? Tell me what Are am I missing? Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. I'm being honest. 
Oh, well, I mean, of course, it's a vast thing, right? Because it's just a huge place. But you can't really, uh, there, you know, a big city is a big city on the one hand, but, but New York is, is its own thing. It's its own it's thing. It's its own thing. I mean, even just like I always enjoyed driving in, uh, coming up over one of the bridges. And I mean, I enjoy the Nashville skyline. Nashville skyline makes me happy every Beautiful. time right. I see it. Right. Sure. But right. like you're driving over one of those bridges at night and that whole city is lit up like that. And it's, it's just a sight like you've never seen. Now flying in is even better. Really? Cause yeah. you see it from up above. And it's just, you know, there's so much mythology about it, and it's all mm. true. Really? The things that aren't true are true. You know really? what I mean? No, I would agree with, Dave, with your assessment completely, because, you know, growing up, I've, I mean, I've lived, in, I've lived in Houston, Texas, which is a big city. I spent a lot of time in Chicago, which, you know, has its own kind of sense of culture. Oh, it totally does. Yeah. It really does. And so I'm thinking, ah, it's New York, whatever. It's like Chicago, only bigger. But it's not. It's completely different. Different vibe, different feel. Mm -hmm. The mass, I mean, as big as Chicago is, it's just dwarfed by the mass of New York. It really is. Well, and I will say this, though, and this is one of these things that's true and not true, right? So as far as people think, New Yorkers thinking that that's the center of the world, I'm sure lots of people do. On the other hand, though, you know, like it was, it's always been exciting to me to get out and go new places, you know? Mm. And especially, and maybe I, I, sh I should qualify that, like I am not a world traveler, but in terms of this country and going places, and I'm, I'm fascinated by the culture in different places, and especially the way it relates to the music. So when it comes to musicians and writers and people that came from a certain place, and the work that they did really expressed that. Mm. And no matter where that place is, you are going to find people that are proud of it and people that hate it. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about Portland, Tennessee, or if you're talking about New York City, that is actually going to be true. In any number I, of places. Yes. Well said. Yeah. How about that on a Saturday morning? Man, well, he, he, he I told him to bring the A game. You That's set the did. bar high. In oh. fact, I'm, I'm dropping my voice about an octave just to keep up. So. No, okay. <laughs> All right, so, wait, let me – okay. That's there better. you go. Look at that. <laughs> the vocal range of Dave Isaac. So, Where's Joe Les when you need him? You right. Know? Oh, boy. Do you know Joe? I don't. But yeah. uh, He's a voiceover I, guy. Did I hear him? As a, yes. In, all right, doing the bumpers. No, no, right. the bumpers. That was Jack Foley. That was ah, Jack Foley out of Texas. Texas. Yeah. 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 We're, we, we've, we've got people everywhere now. It's just, it's just nuts. We have people? We have people but everywhere. But that's, that's the beauty of the modern world. And you were talking about streaming, and that's actually one of the things that, that I think is a positive about it. Yeah. Okay. He's going there. So what is that? Let's, let's, let's touch on that. Because we kind of fumbled a little bit around this. There's a lot been in the news lately with the Amazon and right. Spotify. Mm -hmm. Without kind of trying to set this up too much, can you, can you give us your thoughts on what's going on and your opinion? I think that from a purely musical and cultural perspective, it's a really good thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I say that because you've got a generation coming up on your second generation now of young people that have grown up with access to every bit of music that's ever been recorded. And when you think about how oh, okay. all new music comes from people somehow synthesizing the things they listen to, the things they hear into something new. And that's why every, you, you look at this country and every great music city. So whether you're talking about New York or Memphis mm. or New Orleans, mm. these are places where people came in from other places. And they may have conflicted with each other in some ways, but they heard each other's music. And, you know, you could, wow. I used to teach a class on, uh, on, it was a world music survey class, but I kind of made it about, here's the music you know, and here's all the other places in the world that it came from and how it happened, right? And we spent an awful lot of time talking about New Orleans in particular, mm -hmm. um, and New York as well, because you've got these melting pot cities. I was going to say that, melting pot, and, yeah. And people are hearing these sounds, you know, other, other cultures, other music, and this is how new things happen. Yeah, you know, there's no mistake that you know the birthplace of rock and roll. So much stuff coming out of Memphis, right? Because of it being a hub for that area too, you know. And you still it's have amazing. a meeting. Yeah, and, and I've there. seen that growing up in Baton Rouge. Louisiana, oh, for sure. Yeah, and uh, touching the New Orleans culture. When I was a child, I'm, I remember being seven, eight years old, going to the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival mm -hmm. as a child, walking around not really knowing who I'm seeing or experiencing. But it's the Jazz Festival. Well, you look at the lineup for the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival today, it's every genre on the planet that is converging to venues like that. Right. And and all of them t are touching that community in such an interesting way. Yeah, I saw it's Jimmy Buffett at Jazz Fest in New Orleans. Yeah, which I mean, some people aren't so thrilled about the way that it's expanded, sure, I think. Right, but, right, right, right. But, but in fairness, that's... 
you know, so to bring that back to streaming, okay. right? As think, he, he gets us back on topic. Way, way to keep it. the rails on the show. You think about how if new music comes from people synthesizing different things they've heard, so now you've got a generation that can pull from anything. And so I think it's really interesting because you hear different kinds of retro influences working their way in. Okay. And I don't know if it's made anything new yet that's broken into the mainstream, mm. but at the same time, I'm working with teenagers and young people in their early mid-20s, and some of them are very locked into this is the genre that I, you know, this is what hit me, right. and so I'm doing this. But others, you know, you look at what they listen to, and it's all over the map. And I think you give that a generation or two, and that's going to be good for Ooh, music. Oh, okay. Now, is, isn't there, though, a happy medium somewhere where that can take place, but then the artist can still... Well, supported. there's the there's the yeah. negative side because right. the business model is is uh, a word I can't use on the air. Right, <laughs> right, and that's the unfortunate part of it. That you look at at a company like Spotify, it's not like well, it it reminds me of my very first trip to Nashville. Somehow, through meeting this person to that person, I ended up in somebody's office who was fairly high powered, mm -hmm. and I had no business really being in their office yet. I didn't know anything about the industry or whatever. But I had my first CD. This is 1999, maybe. And so he's looking at it, and he sits back in his chair. He, look, he doesn't, doesn't play it. He just looks at it, looks <laughs> up at me, and says, Well, son, problem is no one in Nashville is making any money. Yeah. And this is you know, up high in his tower. This is 1999. This is no 1999 money, right? when people are certainly still making money. Um, but obviously yeah. it's, it's gotten worse from there. And so now you have people who are making money off the music industry, but the people who are creating the content are not. And I understand that streaming, you were talking about whether your, um, your music is in the cloud or in your house somewhere or on your computer somewhere, right? right? So you don't have you, the tangible object that you can pick up and hold, the record album and you know, the things that we used to do, especially double record albums. Mm -hmm. You can't do that anymore. Um, right. I, that was a reference I shouldn't have made. But... You see what I'm saying? That it, you don't have the same level of ownership of a thing that's just a, an icon in your computer. And if you're streaming, like it's like listening to the radio in the sense that you still don't own a copy right. of that. So maybe it makes sense that that should be less than a download or a physical purchase. But at the same time, it's less than you would get for, well, and I, I don't know mathematically how that works out, but for a play on the radio where... You're, you're supposed to get paid for that. That's yeah. what right. those PROs are for. Right. Those are performance rights or performing rights organizations. Yes, people that collect the royalties to pay to the songwriters. And in terms of streaming, and especially you know, with Spotify and Amazon right now contesting the, the new rates that are, are being put in, it's just offensive. You know, if you're talking about fractions of pennies, and so you want to bump that fraction up another fraction – and a company that's employing many, many people, and certainly people at the top of that company are making money, just say, no, well, we can't, we can't give you that little bump, even though you're getting a fraction of what you used to get. And you talk right. to, and I, I'm not, I don't make my living as a songwriter, but you know, obviously living in Nashville, you know people who do, mm -hmm. and they will tell you how much of an impact it's had on their bottom line. So mm -hmm. there's also. The, the challenge of the musical diversity is that I think it's harder and harder for someone to get a mainstream audience because the outlets are so spread out. So you can have a niche artist that's hugely successful. And, you know, you guys, we're all basically contemporaries in, in the mm -hmm. room here. So I'm sure you can probably relate to this. I look at the lineup for the Ryman or something like mm -hmm. that or, uh, or, or Bonnaroo or whatever. Right. And I realize I don't know who most of these people are, but they're playing Bonnaroo. They're, they're selling out the Ryman. And... You know, I try to make a point of not being completely out of touch. Right. And I work with young people so they they turn on they turn me on to what they listen to. But at the same time, you know, these acts will be huge and I don't know who they are. And that's partly because we're just not exposed to the outlets that the fans of that that artist are hearing them on. Yeah. So much to unpack here. I mean <laughs> Like, yeah, I think it would. Uh, it harkens back to the days that we thought it was cool when we could find out about an artist, an up and coming artist right. that that not everyone really knew about. Oh yeah, you know, there's this. Oh, there's this alternative band or this this group, and and that's what I'm hearing. The difference today is that yeah, they're headlining at the Ryman. That's and when we don't, and that's we don't. When you've heard of them, and we've never, but we've never heard of them, right? You know, it's just because of the streaming world and because of what this generation is doing. Dave heard of them they are mainstream artists and and i'll hear these band names and i'm like 
who is this? You know, and th- and but they are they're packing out. Even it. yeah, uh, one group I forgot the, it was some weird name. I don't even remember the name of it. They did like they had to add a night at the Ryman. Mm-hmm. I mean, they packed it out like three nights in a row. And there's somebody, if I were to say their name, we would not even know who they are. That's right. okay. If it's not Taylor Swift, I don't really Well, and see, this is the other effect that I think has happened is that there has been even more of a split between the very top and everybody else. Yeah. In the sense that there's just a handful of huge mainstream outlets where everyone is aware of who these people are. Everyone knows who Lady Gaga is, whether you've ever heard her music or not. And that's a separate point because right. there's the... The, the persona and the personality and all of that, that that comes across. But I think you had more of a sense, you know, when I was growing up and you'd listen to, to FM radio and you had your legacy artists and you had your new people coming up and you might have that on mainstream radio still. I think country radio plays, yeah. plays up and coming artists still. Um, whether there's, I don't even know if there is rock radio that plays, I mean, who even knows? I, when I flip around, most places you seem to have a couple of classic rock stations that have exactly the same playlist no matter where you are because it's right. one person in one office programming right. them all. Right. And then and maybe, they're all in New York, by the way. Um, are they? Well, that's yeah, what I okay. heard. Well, probably. Who knows? That's the reputation is yes. that whatever you're listening um, to on mainstream radio. the Right. You know, I, I, I thought everyone... Uh, all the uh, the rats were fleeing the sinking ship. That's the the. Oh, uh, okay. No, no. That well, that's the narrative some people are trying to tell. I I just think I. You know, I don't talk like a New Yorker so much. Every once in a while, it comes Ooh, out. Oh, God, my oh, wife hates yeah. when I do that. Yeah. Who um, does? My wife does. She just goes nuts. She's, She's a lovely lady. Don't, I've don't to do that. that. But, you know, <laughs> I, I do have a little bit of a thing about. Um, and I made my joke about don't hold it against me, but there there is a level of animosity towards towards New York in particular that is unfounded and and in some ways coming out of of ignorance more so than any real experience and you know it's on September 12 2001 everybody mm. in America said yeah we love New York yeah and then by about October 1st it was just back to <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow to where yeah. it was and um you know I I understand, and some t- sometimes it's just people having fun, but there really is, like, as a someone who grew up on the East Coast and in the Northeast and now living here, in, and Nashville is, of course, different than most places. Sure. But still living in Tennessee, like, I, I love living here. I love the people here. I'm not interested in the culture war. Yeah. You know, and yeah. like sometimes you're joking with me, but sometimes you're kind of not. Right. And well, you know, Texans, I'm yeah. from Texas. There's some predisposed notions about Texans. Well, too. absolutely there is. One That's of which right. is you meet someone from Texas and within 30 seconds you will know they're from Texas because they will tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I was talking about some things that weren't necessarily true about Texans. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Yes, I, Did I tell you I'm from see, Texas, by the way? Did I that's, say that? that's pride in where you come from. That's and, right. And, like like I was saying, I think everybody has that. Or sure. at least, you know, everywhere you go, there's a reason. Have you met many Californians lately? I don't know. Well, okay, but maybe the Just ones, kidding. We love California. Maybe the <laughs> ones that are proud of it are the ones that stay there. Right. Yeah. Because, no, well, the ones not. that come here say the same things you hear New Yorkers saying, oh, it cost a living. I couldn't live there anymore. And then, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, but. When yeah. I, I'm, I'm going now down off my down my own rabbit hole here. Well, that's okay. We got it. We got a track here. Do you, you want to get? Well, yeah. This? Let's do this. We're going to take a quick break um, and uh, pay some bills. Okay. For our quick break, we're going to come back to the track "Good Enough." Oh boy. There we'll you go. Listen. We'll 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 play "Good Enough" coming out of the break, and then we'll talk about it. Talk about your writing of that, and, and get into some of the more Ooh, of those I topics. Like this one. I've gotten to yeah, hear it. You're Actually. listening to. Uh, The JT and Johnny Show with guest Dave Isaacs right here on WQKR 101.7 FM. Stay tuned. Nice. Pedaling around the neighborhood. That's how Barbara was going to stay active. A heart problem wasn't in the plan. Med Center Health Surgeons were on a mission to strengthen her heart again. With open heart surgery and rehab, Barbara's medical team got her back to her active self. When you can keep up with your grandkids, you know Med Center Health gave you something miraculous. Med Center Health has the region's only open heart surgery program, so you have access to the best right here. Watch the story at medcenterhealth.org forward slash right here. Wilkinson and Wiseman Funeral Home, 715 South Broadway, has been serving Portland with dignity and professionalism since 1906. 
being there to help you through the difficult days and decisions when a loved one passes away. Charles Wilkinson and the experienced staff at Wilkinson and Wiseman are there in your time of need. Wilkinson and Wiseman Funeral Home, 715 South Broadway in Portland. It's just a stone's throw from anywhere in Portland to Woodard BP and Tires, 300 North Broadway in Portland, home of those great Michelin tires. Whether you need tires for your car, truck, or any other vehicle, you need to go to Woodard BP and Tires. They have the biggest selection and the best prices on the best tire around. Michelin. Woodard BP and Tire Service, 300 North Broadway in downtown Portland. For the last few years, Years, you've heard us talk about the newest cars at Al's Auto Mart, 202 Highway 52 West in Portland. Not new, but not quite used either. Well, now Al's has something even more exciting. Cars that are Friedels. Not quite free, but real deals. Price to sell. But the Friedels don't last long because everybody wants one. So if you're ready for a newest car or truck, check out the Friedels at Al's Auto Mart, 202 Highway 52 West in Portland.
You just heard Good Enough by Dave Isaacs, ladies and gentlemen. What a fantastic song, man. You cannot listen to that. And this is my litmus test on music is, does it get your toe tapping? Oh, yeah. Boom, get your toe tapping. Man. Is it something you want to hear again? Boom, want to it's hear gotta, it again. It's got to hit your body. That's Jamming. my jam. It's got to hit your body Rockin'. before it hits your ears. And I'll tell you how I learned that. Playing bars for years, and you it's, you got the, the wall of backs to you at the bar the while you're over on the side of the seat. room. Yeah. Right? And then if you can get the hips shaking a little bit in the seat, then the head's going to turn. Wow. That kind of reminded me of that show, The Voice, with the chairs turned around. Right. Because we've got nice office swivel chairs <laughs> well, here. You know, I never thought of that, but it is very much like that. Turned, yeah. <laughs> they're only going to turn around if they're impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it, loved it, loved it. Now, tell tell people out there, um, we got a lot to get to still. we got to just rush, 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 rush. Because we, we got a teacher, an author, a guitar player. I mean, there's just so much. But if I wanted to get that song right there and get it on my cloud or in my bank or I, you know, how would I go hear that? Could I go hear it on Spotify or Amazon or, or Apple, or could this I go to your website? Or all of those things. I mean, this is the advantage also for a, a for an artist, especially for an independent artist, is that you can get on the same platforms that every major is on, mm-hmm. and it's easy to do because you just go through one of these online aggregators where you send it to one place and they send it out to everybody else. Mm-hmm. Now you're up there. It's kind of like I remember somebody saying once that putting up a website or putting anything on the internet is like putting a flower in the window of an apartment on the 100th floor and mm. hoping somebody sees it. Right. You know, so so there is that. But at least it's very easy to say just go to Apple Music or to whatever and put my name in and it will come up. And that's and are you Dave or David? On Dave. Dave. D-A-V-E-I-S-A-A-C-S. There I'm, are, when the show is over, I am... I'm grabbing that music. That's my jam. I love that stuff, man. Nice, cool. man. Yeah, JT doesn't just he doesn't he doesn't croon. No, and, and I don't offer that. All yeah. that. He doesn't just mm-hmm. say that. No, if one, that. if we are anything, we are we are honest on this show. That's right, JT. We That's right. we call them like we see them. So, Most what's your inspiration for a song like that when you sit down and? Well, that's that's. So that particular is, one. About the, about the groove, about the funk. It's, well, about. it's about the groove for me. And now I wrote this with my buddy Steve Trombley, who now actually lives in the south of France and is running an Airbnb down there. And uh, Rough life. But, yeah, you, you might say. But uh, he and I wrote a bunch before he left Nashville. And he would come into a writing session with a word or mm. a phrase. And, you know, the, the process of writing is different with different people. But for he and I, it would be, all right, let's just talk about this idea. Let's talk about this word. And he came in with the phrase good enough, and we just started riffing on it. And so it ended up like we went with, I see the Louisville Slugger thing over there. So we, we ended up kind of going with the baseball metaphor on the, on the second verse, um, start, starting with poker and then going to, the, uh, going to baseball. Nice. And that was just, you know, the conversation. Is, and as it works in songwriting sessions, you're just talking right. about, hey, where is this going to go? But definitely um, Steve and I both share a, a certain level of attitude. Um, I think, okay. and it was. Then it also just becomes fun to play the character. You know, hey, a chump can't take the lumps. You know, like mm. I don't talk like that, but it's fun to sing it. Sure. So love it. That kind of thing. Nice. But awesome. uh, but it's, yeah, it's very much about that that rhythm and that groove. And the funny thing is, for me, as a writer, you know, because I'm ultimately still a musician first, and because it's all about the the rhythm and the groove for me, which I think is the. See, I can't help the uh, the '90s references come up because now I've got D Light playing in my head. Going, <laughs> groove is in the heart, but it's groove but it's true, heart. right? I love groove. Now heart. it's come time on. for a breakdown. You know, oh, no, that was a different song. Um, but um, the the song gets written in terms of melody and lyric, and we've got you know then the basic chords. But it takes weeks, sometimes months, for me to really nail down what that music is going to be because. There's lots of, and this actually is going to segue nicely into into the book, okay, and my teaching, because you one of the things that I think you want to develop if you're learning how to play is to do one of two things, either to figure out where it is that you live musically, you know, what is the thing that is the most natural to you and that inspires you the most to make you want to play, that's one thing. And then the other side of it is if you have a thing that you do, but you want to be able to do more, then you have to expand your vocabulary. And so every musical decision you make is a crossroads. You yeah. Go left or you go right. And JT can help you expand your vocabulary, by the way. Yeah. Well, I heard there were some big words going yeah. by mm-hmm. before. Well, you that. were speaking Spanish. I mean. Sorry. Yeah. No, I got nothing <laughs> against that. That's all good. Um, but 
you know, in a songwriting session, you sit down, you have your idea, and you say, okay, now we're wide open. We can go anywhere. We've got a thousand paths we can take. Over the course of writing the song, every decision you make narrows your set of choices because now you've got to fit into the parameters you've established. Right? Okay. So it's all about choices. And what a lot of people who, who start playing music do is they learn enough to be able to play their favorite songs or to be able to put things together in a way that they can write within the vocabulary they're looking to write in. But then you get locked in. Sure. And so after a while, you don't have so many choices. So, so you're saying there's more than three chords? There are. Oh. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and no, Sometimes three chords is all you need. Sometimes two chords is all you need. Sometimes really? one chord is all you need. I like it. John Lee Hooker had a whole career on one chord, mm -hmm. basically. You know, well, in that voice. But, um, you know, the, the everything about it. But so I'm coming at it from the perspective of trained as a musician first, wanting to be, when I was a teenager learning how to play guitar, I wanted to be able to play anything and everything. Mm. And that's what was important to me. It was about being a guitar, being a guitar player, and I had my my heart music, you know, the stuff mm. that that I loved the most. But I was interested in everything, mm. and the goal was to be able to play in any situation. And if you want to make a a life in music as a player, then you have to. You don't know what the next gig's going to be, so you've got to be able to function in different situations. So you build up all these different skills and different vocabularies. When you're called upon to do X or Y, then you can do it. As an artist, that's actually kind of a challenge because you've got to pick the right thing, mm. and or rather, you've got to pick the thing that's the most natural and resonant to you, and you've got to stick with, you have to make sure the work you do works enough within that that there's something coherent about it. Mm, right? That's good stuff. So, you know, when I'm writing, mm. and I've got all the, this, I've got a lot of vocabulary, a lot of places I could take a song, but where does it want to go, mm. you know? And so I try this and I try that. And, you know, sometimes um, I think I might make my co-writers crazy because I'll say, here's this. And then a couple of weeks later, hey, but then I thought it was this way. <laughs> and well, what about this and what about that? Yeah. It takes yes. time to nail it down. But once it's right, it's right. It's right. Yeah. Unless it's one of these things that's right for a while. Mm. And then it's not exciting anymore and something else mm. happens. But. I wouldn't know much about that's right. but but that's you know certain people you know like Bob Dylan is famous for that that he never plays songs on stage the way that they sound the way he records them to the point where you don't even recognize them half the time and people get frustrated <laughs> yeah you know right and sometimes you want to hear the song just like it was I think a lot yeah. of times you do yeah yeah but as you know the other side of it as a player I do like to be able to open it up sure and some people enjoy it I mean that's the spirit of jazz really too. Right, you know, that's, that's what I was thinking as you were going through that. It yeah. can go this way or it can go that way, and that to me is, has always been really exciting. So let's do this. Let's jump on a quick break, about a minute plus. Break. I want to hear this guy play some guitar. Right. When we come back from the break, we're going to have you play something live for us. Sounds good. And then we'll go into the wrap up of the show, really, because the hour's kind of getting away from us. Yeah, so. well, we definitely want to make sure we get to his book so we can right. get the plug on that. And of course, it's just really great to have a, a writer here with the with the heart and soul of a teacher. Uh, what a great commendation. Absolutely. Uh, we're listening to the JT and Johnny Show with special guest Dave Isaacs. Stay tuned because he's going he's gonna to play that six string, six, six string when we get back, and it's going to be great. Wilkinson and Wiseman Funeral Home, 715 South Broadway, has been serving Portland with dignity and professionalism since 1906, being there to help you through the difficult days and decisions when a loved one passes away. Charles Wilkinson and the experienced staff at Wilkinson and Wiseman are there in your time of need. Wilkinson and Wiseman Funeral Home, 715 South Broadway in Portland. It's just a stone's throw from anywhere in Portland to Woodard BP and Tires, 300 North Broadway in Portland, home of those great Michelin tires. Whether you need tires for your car, truck, or any other vehicle, you need to go to Woodard BP and Tires. They have the biggest selection and the best prices on the best tire around. Michelin. Woodard BP and Tire Service, 300 North Broadway in downtown Portland. The cars and trucks and owls 
Paul's Auto Mart are different. Not new, but not quite used either. In fact, they're so different, they needed a new name. The crack research team at Al's Auto Mart was on the case. It wasn't until one day during their lunch break that it happened. Researcher Alvin Philpot made the discovery of his career. Newsed. Newsed. Newsed cars and newsed trucks. Many hard to find in stock. Quality vehicles at wholesale prices and financing for everyone. Al's Auto Mart in Portland, Tennessee. Online at alsautomart.com. Esmeralda took a shine to me Why couldn't she let me be your baby Oh, oh, baby She took me places that I've never been She showed me things I'll never see That is uh, Esmeralda uh, with Dave Isaacs uh, in studio live uh, today on the JT and Johnny Show. Dave, it's been so awesome having you here, man. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome, man. And you've got a great groove in those uh, tunes and the sounds. And you're actually sitting here, guys. If you can see my view, I'm sitting behind the studio console, and Dave is in front of us, and he's got the guitar. He's ready to go. He's going to play a little bit live for us uh, this morning. What are we going to hear, man? You know, I was just kind of contemplating on all that. I'm running through the catalog in my head, but I'm I'm gonna do something. I'll, I'll do a good uh, a, a good waking up Saturday morning thing. So this is I said that things lean in different directions, and it kind of depends on who I'm writing with and where it wants to go. But I wrote this with my friend Tom House, and okay, Tom is Tom thought he was gonna be, be a preacher until he heard Dylan when he was 16. <laughs> so that tells us something about, I love that. Yeah. about Tom, but. Um, so this is a silly little thing yeah. that, that we uh, that we wrote. Let's do it. When I get to going good, really get to going good. Oh, when I get to going good, I hardly ever stop. Run around, I hang around, up and down, here and there. I don't care anywhere till I finally drop. Once I get to going good, I really get to going good. The star is myself all night long, like anybody should. I celebrate, stop my thigh, and never stop. I question why. My reason justified, yes, I think I am. When I get to going good, I really get to going good. Oh, when I get to going good, I hardly ever stop. Run around. Hang around up and down Even there I don't care Anywhere till I finally drop Needing, I'm sure enough succeeding The quest is what you're making And you take it where you can Feeling dead, feeling fine Waiting for the sun to shine No one baby me in it, man That's all right with me When I get to going good I really get to going good When I get to going good I hardly ever stop Run around, hang around Up and down, here and there I don't care anywhere Till I find a drop The only thing I need to know, days are come, days are go, rain and fall, wind and blow, just the way it is. People worry, people fight, people try with all their might. Stop a lot and get it right, what they got to do? When I get to going good, I really get to going good. Oh, when I get to going good, I hardly ever stop. Run around, hang around, up and down, here and there, I don't care anywhere till I find a drop. Oh, my. Man, I get the impression that uh, that uh, songwriting and music and singing is kind of a, a fun vibe, a fun thing for you, man. Just it chill, is. yeah. It's, it it, it, is. it comes mean, out in your music. There's there's stuff that obviously becomes, um, more, you know, some songs are more serious, some things get quieter, and uh, I've, you know, like I said, I've got a really diverse musical background. I actually 
I was a, a classical guitar player when I was younger, and in college that was what I studied, and so, you know, that's this whole other... Right. So that is a completely different vibe, obviously. From, totally, yeah. But ultimately, when I look back on it now, I'm I'm glad that I had that kind of training and yes. was exposed to that world and all of that. And you want to talk about, um, you know, referencing New York to be in that world in New York City was just huge. I mean, so stimulating with the musicians mm. you were exposed to and all that. But at the same time, as you can see from just my sitting here, I don't really sit still right. when I play, and so. To have to be completely what know what oh, that's yeah, with like the, with the one foot up right uh, you got the footstool you know, you're footstool, there yeah. by yourself on a stage in a tuxedo glaring at people for rustling the cough drops right and uh, it's it's just <laughs> glaring at people for it's rustling. not me you know right 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 it's a part of of me but it's well what not. I love is that if you needed to you could do it yeah that's the thing that's you know? that's yeah. part of it yeah I mean it's a you know to really do it the way that. I mean, you know, I was devoted to it and practicing five, six, seven, eight hours a day. Right. So, you know, that's that's a demanding world. But any any musical language, if you really want to master it, you know, like I was talking about finding your musical home, what is the place that you live? You know, right. if I want to play bluegrass, I've got to live in that world if I'm going to play it well as the guys mm. that really play it. If I want yes. to play jazz, I need to live in that world. If I want to play classical music, I want to live in that world. Even, you know, you want to play the blues, real, I mean, anything. You know, mm. like I'm, I'm the kind of musician I visit these places. Okay. You know, and ultimately it's all just me leaning in this direction or or another direction. But there are people that just embody, yeah, that that style. You know, and that's just who they are to the core. Yeah, I love that, Johnny. You know, we get we get a lot of tidbits and a lot of factoids about the songwriting style and growth. First time I mean, I've, we've heard this particular thing that you know visiting the places and getting yeah. immersed in that culture. That's a cool. That's a cool way to think about that. Well, one thing I'm learning is that there's just no way to get a, one hour is just not enough for the great Dave Isaacs. That's first of all. Yeah, there's just not enough time. But what I want I wanted to just comment on briefly is that I really enjoy your music and the songwriting, but you also obviously have the heart of a teacher, and. And I want you to be, we don't want to run out of time before a, tell us a little bit about your guitar studio. If people want to learn how they can get, find you. Um, cause I think I need to sign up. And then also this book that we have going on, how can we find, it? I'm really excited for the book and we want to make sure people know how to find that as well. Well, I teach, I have uh, my own business. I rent a space uh, near downtown. You can find me at Nashville guitar com. And everything that I do is up there. So that includes information about the private lessons. My blog is up there, so I write about music a lot, as you might imagine. Um, links to my YouTube channel. I have uh, different kinds of instructional things up there. So I put out a lot of content. And the book is sort of the culmination of the, the big ideas that, that inform all of that. And it actually goes back to my being a student. It's called The Perpetual Beginner. And The Perpetual Beginner is the person who has played for X amount of time, but feels like they haven't really improved in a long time. So that might have been a year of playing, it might have been 20 years of playing, but there's, I know a lot of people like that. I think most people who play the guitar fall into that category. We hit walls, man. Yeah, there's a handful that really progress beyond that. But So the, the whole idea is, what are the things that I learned when I was a student that allow me, now 30 years down the line, to still love playing music and to feel vital about it and that I can learn something new if I'm getting stuck, which everybody does, right? So the book is an instructional memoir in the sense that it's telling these stories, but from each story is a particular musical principle or lesson, and I'm explaining why it, why I still use it, why it matters to what and I do. And you said it's na Nash... Nash Nashville Guitar Guru. Nashville Guitar Guru. Com. Com. The book is Perpetual Beginner. Look, we got we got less than a minute here, buddy. So just in, in thirty seconds or less, what kind of what's what's we ask everybody this for people out there listening, musicians, songwriters, guitar students. What kind of advice do you have for folks out there? I'm going to contradict your Ricky Bobby line and say, if you're not first, you're last. Doesn't work with music. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. Beautiful. It's great. Well, you you. 
it's been a good day. Um, and right now I'm just, I'm humbled by your, your craft and I'm really excited that, and just so grateful that you took the time to join us. And I know our listeners are well, he's David Isaacs. He's Dave Isaacs out there, Nashville, guitar guru.com, his book, the perpetual beginner. It's going to be available for you. It looks like it's something that we all need to check out and love the music. Man, it's been a great day on the JT and Johnny Show. Dave, thanks for being a part of our, our world today out here in Portland. Thanks and for Johnny, me. it's been another great show, man. <laughs> it's fun, buddy. We're going to go out with a little more of Esmeralda. <laughs> and we're gonna, then we'll take you to the income doctor, retirement income doctor, right after this. So uh, hang on. Let's just mail Esmeralda as you go about your day. Took a shine to me. Why couldn't she let me be your oh, baby? Oh, oh, baby. 